Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at photo retouching specifically with eyes or photo retouching eyes in Photoshop CS6. So eyes are very important to me. Uh, if you look at any of my work, any of my portraits, um, I'm usually concentrating mostly on eyes or people with unusual eyes or beautiful eyes or just eyes in general. I just have a thing for great looking eyes. So when it comes to Photoshop, I actually want to enhance the eyes just a bit to make them look even better. Now, of course, you know, very few people, if I would say no one has perfect eyes. So there's always going to be something going on, whether it's red in the eyes, uh, lines under the eyes, the way the shot was lit, you know, it could be making it darker under the eyes than it really is. So we do things in Photoshop to make the eyes look better. Uh, but not too unrealistically better. And that's where you have to draw the line. Now, if you're into this whole, I hate photo retouching, people should look the way they look, then you should probably stop watching this tutorial <laughs> because uh, photo retouching is a part of life. It, you'll see it in every magazine on the shelves today. Everyone gets retouched. And unless you're doing something journalistic where you're trying to portray a scene or a mug shot or something where that person has to look exactly like they shot with a camera, then by all means, don't do this. Just make them, you know, take the shot right out of the camera. But for everyone else, this one is about retouching eyes. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, I have actually a stock photo here. Um, this is an eye stock photo, and it was, uh, it was basically doing a search for red eyes. Now, this is not to be confused with red eye from the camera, like, the you know, where the camera flash creates it. That's a whole different story. That's a whole different tutorial. But this is specifically for looking or getting red out of the eyes, like bloodshot eyes, I guess is the best way to put it. Now, I have tried just about everything. I have tried cloning, I've tried using patch tool, I've tried healing brushes, I've tried all kinds of techniques to get red out of the eyes. And it just depends on the eye itself as to which one will work better. Um, sometimes if it's just a little bit, you know, maybe very distinct with lots of uh, space around it, you can patch it out or clone it out or use the healing brushes to get it out. But in many cases, when it's kind of blending in like this, it's more work than it's worth than to, to do it other methods, which we're about to take a look at. So here's the last thing I want to tell you is that you'll be tempted to use white as a color. And because, you, you know, the whites of the eyes and really, technically, no one's eye is 100% white. No one on the planet has white eyes. They're always a little darker than white. They could be a little grayer, a little beiger. But, you know, like as you, you can see going into the corner here, this is not white, even without the red. So if you make someone's eyes white, it will look like you made someone's eyes white. We don't ever want to do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, first of all, I'll show you some of the other methods that may not work so well. So for example, let's use my one of my favorite tools, the patch tool. Now in a case where I want to take out maybe this particular one, I'll just go ahead and circle it with the patch tool. And let's say we go down to about there and move it over to an area that doesn't have the red. And again, it'll be okay. You can kind of do that, kind of patch out the red and you're replacing it with the exact same color in the eye, so that'll work okay. But you're gonna to get to a point to where you're gonna be doing so much patching that the patch tool is just not gonna be a effective tool or a time-saving tool, so to speak. And let's see if we try and patch that over here. And then you start ending up with weird colors in the wrong spots because you didn't have enough white to pull from. Uh, so patch tool, use it sparingly in, in red eye situations like this. When it's something, maybe it's one little object in the eye you're trying to get rid of, the patch tool may work okay. So let's try the next one. Let's switch over to another one of my favorites, the spot healing brush. Now the spot healing brush in CS5 and CS6 is now content aware, so it can do a much better job than previous versions. Uh, so I'll go ahead and make my brush a little bit bigger. And by the way, if you're not using a Wacom tablet or graphics tablet to do this, you're doing it the hard way. You're doing. You're using a mouse, you're using a trackpad. Your mouse or trackpad could either be on or off. The purpose of a tablet or a pen is that you have various levels of pressure. So you press a little harder, it does a little harder. You press a little lighter, it does a little lighter. If you're doing retouching without a tablet, 
it's not going to be fun. You're not going to get the best results. You definitely want a tablet, any tablet. If you even went with one of the cheapest ones, like their $50 Graphire tablets or Bamboo tablets, I should say, those are better than a $100 mouse all day long. So go with any tablet. Any tablet is better than a mouse. Um, I prefer Wacom tablets. I'm using an Intuos 5 here. Okay, so with that said, let's say I try and use the um, spot healing brush with uh, Content Aware. So I'll go ahead and just uh, try and Content Aware that out. And again, it will do a much better job than years past uh, with the previous spot healing tools. But, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to paint this stuff out of here uh, using this method. So, again, this is going to be, you know, challenging depending on how much red is in the eye. But you can do a lot more with it today than you could have before. And the problem is you're going to start leaving all these little spots. So you're going to have to do a lot more work to use this tool. So let me show you a method that I think will work best for most situations. And that is we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. So we'll just go to our new layer icon here. And with our new layer icon, we're just basically a blank layer, nothing on it. And now we're going to switch over to the paintbrush, just the regular old fashioned, you know, 1986 paintbrush. Okay, so we got our paintbrush here, but the difference is your opacity normally is at 100%, meaning you're using 100% of that color on that tool. And I'm going to slow you down. I don't want you to use 100% because 100% again will look unnatural. It'll also look like you did it. It'll look blotchy in certain spots. We're going to take it way down. We're going to take the opacity of this brush way down to about 20%. Now, why 20%? Because you'll have to work in constantly, you'll have to work in layers, so to speak, putting on layers of color. Um, and that will build it up more naturally than putting down 100% of the color all at once. So with that said, now we're gonna hold down our option. Oh, here, let's enter that. We're gonna hold down our option or Alt key, and that will bring up the little eyedropper so that you can sample the exact color. We don't wanna choose white, we don't wanna choose a color off the color palette, we want to actually use the color that's in the eye that's not red. So I'm just going to go like right about here and sample that color. And when I bring that up, you can see that's not white. That's not a white ring inside that gray ring. It's kind of a grayish ring inside of that gray ring. So now that I've got that color, we can go ahead and I'm lifting up my brush each time. Lifting it up, paint a little more. Lift it up, paint a little more. Because what that's doing is it's gradually building up the color and gradually painting out the white. Now, if I keep painting right now and don't lift the brush up, it's just gonna to continue to paint that 20%. When I want another 20%, I lift the brush up and paint some more. So again, this is where your tablet comes in handy because you can also do this with pressure. Now, uh, so you can get a much cleaner look out of that and also using a tablet, it's easier to adjust the brush size. Come over here and pick a different white and again, we'll just continue to paint out the bloodshot eye. Okay, and continue working till we get it all out. Now, and I said all. We don't really want it all out because, again, that will look too white, too unnatural. So I'm leaving a little bit of red around the edges here. And I'm doing that on purpose because that's the way real eyes look. So again, sampling this color in the corner here is better because it's not white. So we don't want to paint white in that corner. Um, so we'll just start painting... Uh, this 20%, kind of reducing the amount of red and putting back in the natural eye color. And note, I said the natural eye color, not white. Okay, good, good, good. And again, we're going to leave some of that red in there because everyone has a little red in there. We just wanted to reduce the amount that we saw initially. And I'd probably stop right about there. You use your own judgment for when you want to stop. And really, you want to zoom out to 100%, and I'm zooming way out because, of course, that eye was just cropped to the eye, because that will really show you what that eye looks like. If you're zoomed in constantly, you're not getting a real representation. And I can also see when I do zoom in, I've got a little more work to do around this edge here. But you get the idea. You want to zoom in when you need to work. You want to zoom out to check it, to make sure that you're not making it too unrealistically white. And you can always um, check it by simply doing a before and after by turning that layer on and off. So turning that layer on and off, and I can start to see 
uh, the reduction of red. And again, if we zoom out to a normal eye size, uh, that would be fine for this particular portrait because you know no one's going to be looking at it that closely or that zoomed in uh, when it's printed or otherwise. Okay, so that's the red reducing the bloodshot in the eye kind of effect. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a common practice and that's reducing the amount of darkness under the eyes. And again, the darkness under the eyes comes from actual lines with age, you know, lack of sleep, bad lighting, all of the above, you know, everything can create that shadow under the eye and make that a little bit unnatural. What we don't want to do as retouchers is completely remove it because if you completely remove it, then no one's eye looks like that except for maybe a infant and you end up making an eye that doesn't look right. So um, the easiest way to do it, and I know this is exactly opposite of what I just said, but the easiest way to do it is duplicate the layer and completely remove it so that you can then dial it back in to be as much as you want. So in that case, I'm going to take this person and who's a friend of mine, I'm going to just basically completely remove it because her, her eyes look great. It's just that, you know, with the lighting of this particular shot that I took, uh, it's emphasizing a little darkness here that probably you wouldn't notice in real life. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. So it's just the background. I'm going to hit Command J or you can uh, just simply drag it down to the new layer icon to duplicate it. So now we've got the duplicate on top and this is where we're going to completely get rid of all of the darkness because that way we can dial back in as much as we want. So there are various ways for doing this. Um, my two preferred methods are using either the patch tool or using a clone stamp tool set to lighten. lighten. All right, so let's try the patch tool because the spot under the eye looks pretty good here. So let's go ahead, or spot under the darkness, I should say. And we'll just go ahead and patch this completely out, making it completely unnatural. Okay, there it is, completely unnatural eye, basically no darkness under the eye whatsoever. And again, that's the part where we know it's fake, we know it looks bad, we know you didn't do it right, you know, so forth and so on. Same thing here. We'll just select the same area and completely remove it so that we can dial it back in. Okay, just drag it down to another area. And you can only drag it down to another area if that other area looks good. If the other area doesn't look good, then you got to use other methods, which I, like I said, um, in my case would be using a clone stamp tool uh, set to lighten mode in about 40%. I usually start lightening using the spot lighter spot underneath, painting on the darker spot to clone that in. But her eyes look great, so it was easy, easy enough to do it, or her skin looks great, so it was easy enough to do it down at the bottom here. Okay, so now, unrealistic, nobody looks like that, nobody's eye looks that light, and I can see a little bit more here that probably should go. Okay, so now that we got it completely unrealistic, now let's dial back in the amount that we want. And the way we dial it back in, and it looks like I am going to use the clone stamp here. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab our clone stamp tool, set the mode to lighten, and let's drop the percentage down to around 40%. Now that I've done that, what I can do is when I sample this lighter area under the eye, and again, 40% means I'm not blasting 100% of that lightness in. I'm just lightening anything darker than that by 40%. So I can really lighten that spot under the eye. And you got to be careful with women and makeup because you might end up taking off some of the mascara or some of the part under the eye that was there on purpose. So we just really want to lighten that up and make that, again, totally unnatural. But you're going to see why we did that in a minute. Okay, so now that we've got it gone, it's, you know, completely gone. Remember, the original eye is underneath that layer. So we just took it all out with this layer. Now, the reason we do that is because now that we have this layer with it completely gone, we can just use opacity to dial down that layer, which will show the layer underneath or the background underneath. So we can dial back in a little bit of that line that everyone has to make it look a little bit more natural. And again, you're going to do this for the age of your subject. If your subject's older, you're going to dial more back in. If your subject's younger, you can get away with dialing in less. It will be to your taste and to your client's requirements. But if I dial it all the way down, we bring it all the way back. I dial it up some more, just kind of reduce it, not getting rid of it completely. 
And again, it's to your taste. Um, and I'll leave that up to you to decide what your taste is. So that is a quick tutorial, a quick way of looking at uh, adjusting eyes. And I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Once again, my name is Terry White. Thank you for watching this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast.